Thanks everyone for coming along to our next community group hangout. Had a few apologies from um, some of the other members of the group this week. So I've got, uh, there's quite a list of things that I wanted to, to go through today, uh, kind of general catch up on where we are and next steps. Um, I think uh, Terry's probably the only person who's not been to the call before. Um, Terry, you just want to quickly introduce yourself to the group? Uh, yeah, why not? Um, I'm Terry. I work with Morse Digital. We're the uh, web developer for GLL. So we're, we're currently looking at um, uh, implementing uh, the uh, open data. And uh, this is my first course. I'm just kind of really getting the lay of the land. Great. Thank you. Um, so I, uh, I've got a bit of a catch up for you. So help, um, help get you up to speed on, on where we're at. Um, as usual, I've got a few slides just to help kind of organize the call. Uh, so I'll just share my screen now. Okay, uh, hopefully you can all see those okay. Um, so the, um, the agenda for uh, today's call, um, the main things I wanted to do was just give, give a brief update on um, latest changes to the specification. Um, talk a little bit about um, the plans for connect next steps. Um, in uh, moving to getting people to start implementing the specification. Um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the best way that we can support um, people in doing that. We've got, some, we've got some things planned already, but it'd be useful to feed in any suggestions. Um, and then there's a couple of things uh, that have been added to the agenda. Um, so Ben has kind of flagged up that the spec doesn't currently support uh, describing um, what level of disability support is available for events. So um, I want to devote a few minutes to, to talking through that. Um, um, there's also been a few discussions around how we move forward with standardizing um, activity lists. So I wanted to give a kind of brief update on um, the, the current plan for doing that um, and sort of paint a picture for where we go, uh, where we go next. Okay, um, and then the kind of any other business. So if there's anything else you want to, to raise, then uh, we'll, I'll try and keep some time at the end, the end for that. So everyone's got a chance to contribute. So, um, so for, I guess largely for Terry's benefit, story so far, um, the, we've done most of the groundwork for the standardization work happened at the end of last year. So we did, um, at the ODI, we did a bunch of work on uh, researching existing standards um, and requirements in the sector, um, which we used as input into um, the work of this group. Um, the main thing that we've been um, collaborating on over the past few months is the creation of the modeling opportunity data specification. Um, I checked earlier, we've uh, published five drafts of that since December. Uh, the most recent one was um, yesterday. Um, the other kind of uh, thread of activity discussion is around um, encouraging people to start sharing um, their activity lists, um, partly as a way to help um, specify how to publish those lists, but also with a view to starting a process of creating a standardized list within the sector. Um, so we'll talk a bit more about that later in the call. Um, so uh, the specification. Um, I'll just quickly recap what's changed and then we'll just have a quick, very quick look through the, the spec, um, give you a chance to uh, ask any, any questions. Um, <clears throat> so the, the focus of the last call, um, we, we had a few discussions. The main one was around um, how we were going to handle um, describing uh, categ kind of categories of events, so different ways that we might tag and describe events. Um, and capturing um, suitability of events for people of different ages um, uh, uh, and other kind of uh, criteria. Um, what we took away from that was that we decided to, to keep um, that area of the spec quite light to begin with and look to kind of iterate it based on feedback uh, from people who start using the spec. Um, I've also uh, done uh, quite a few uh, changes throughout the specification itself. Um, redrafted a few sections just to make them a bit clearer. Um, there are now examples throughout the specification 
um, and I've added some conformance criteria so we can start to highlight which, which data items we think are um, essential for people to be publishing um, and which ones might just be kind of recommended or entirely optional. Um, so I'm just going to change uh, to my browser. Can you use, um, see the specification now? So just want to check that you're seeing the right bit of my screen. Somebody just shout to say if you've seen this, can you see the specification? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay, um, just to kind of uh, quickly just give you a, a tour through um, what's changed. Um, I'm not going to go through it in detail. Um, uh, it, it clocks in at about 30 odd pages now, so um, there's quite a bit of content here. Um, so um, the kind of key things that have uh, changed, um, it's been some updates to uh, some new sections. So I've added a requirement section that just spells out some of the high level requirements that um, have been following um, as we uh, have created the specification. So things like um, uh, the primary focus being on discovery of opportunities to be physically active, uh, the need to cover all types of opportunity da data, so events, activities, venues, um, and also importantly, all types of physical activities, so that we're not just focused on sports, but um, activities more broadly. So I thought that was useful to spell out um, for particularly people who might be coming to the specification from outside the group, um, who weren't maybe uh, has been involved in the early development. Um, under the Concept, key concept section, um, I revised the, the data model diagram. Um, I, I've also removed a couple of sections here. Um, in the previous draft, I'd added some notes around um, how we might go about publishing control vocabularies. Um, so for example, if we wanted to have um, standard terminology for describing um, fitness levels or intensity levels, um, so what I took from the previous discussions we had around that um, is that um, that may not have been the most important thing to, um, to focus on initially for the first version of the spec. So rather than leave it in as a kind of placeholder, I've just taken it out for now. Um, and we can add that back in as we uh, decide that we need some control vocabularies in areas of the specification. Um, the approach that we've taken so far is that um, the, the properties are generally kind of tags, um, so just kind of uh, text labels that can be associated with um, various bits of the event description or numeric ranges, so the kind of age, height, weight range type um, information. Um, it's the data model specification that's had uh, the kind of biggest overhaul. Um, so a couple of things to highlight there is um, I've uh, uh, just scroll down to events to give you a kind of example. So I've um, made sure that each each of the sections on the different types uh, of resource that were, that were publishing uh, as part of opportunity data, there is a table of all of the, the kind of essential properties or most important properties that we think are useful to include. So um, each property is linked through to a more formal definition. Um, most of them are coming from schema.org because we've been using that as the basis for our model. Um, for each property, there is a status. So this is the conformance criteria. So it says whether um, a property is required or is recommended or optional. Um, hopefully we can use that to drive creation of some validation tools that can help us um, check whether people are providing um, the kind of necessary minimum information to, to uh, support discovery uh, of opportunities, um, but also to highlight areas where people could publish additional information that might be useful for certain users of the data. So there's a full list of, of the properties. Um, we also have a few custom uh, properties that have been defined. So the, this was things that um, uh, schema.org didn't cover, um, but were important to the description of opportunity data. 
So things like um, adding an age range uh, or height range or a gender restriction um, to help uh, qualify an event description. These are also linked through to a formal definition. Um, there's a separate document that I've published, uh, which is the Open Active um, Namespace Open Active Vocabulary, which lists um, these terms. So this is a kind of more formal um, piece of documentation for our uh, schema. It, all of the, the, the properties are available in a machine readable format as well. Um, so this is kind of a common way if you're defining um, standards on the web that you'll have this kind of uh, separate vocabulary document. So the, um, that kind of backs up the, the main specification. Um, it means that anywhere that you're referring to a, uh, a custom property, there is a place that um, somebody can look it up on the web. Um, within each of the, the, the descriptions of the resources, I've now got a series of examples. So there's at least one and, in, and often several examples for each of the each of the different types. So you can see here I've got a uh, simple uh, event description that just has um, the URL name, description, start date and duration for a Tai Chi class. Um, and then uh, an example that shows how we can add more information. So here uh, information on the organizer and then the location where the class will take, take place. Um, the, the two types of resource that have probably got most documentation here at the moment are um, events uh, and locations because that, that they're the kind of two, two key types really. Um, but there are uh, examples in, in every section. So the examples of how to describe an organizer um, and then also a very simple activity list. So the, the spec is kind of much more complete now uh, hopefully there's, there's, there's uh, uh, useful documentation that can help guide people towards um, uh, implementing it. Um, so Terry, as you start to do some work, it'd be useful to get some feedback from you, uh, uh, perhaps on the mailing list on, on how you found working with the, with the specification. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. So um, uh, let's just go back to my slides. Okay, so um, that's uh, yeah. So that's where we got to revising the spec. Um, the other thing that I've done is I've I've, I've kind of relabeled the spec now from a, an editor's draft, so something that was basically being kicked around within this group, to what I've called a um, candidate specification, because um, I think we're at the stage now where it'd be useful to get a wider group to give us feedback on the specification. Um, and it also is just a useful marker to say that we've reached a useful milestone that um, you know, the spec is kind of reasonably complete. Um, it may not cover all of the detail that everyone needs, but there's a kind of coherent model there that should cover um, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the, of the use cases people have for sharing opportunity data. So I think we're, we're at a stage now where um, we can start to have um, uh, conversations about um, you know, whether there are specific uh, specific elements that are not covered, so things like um, disability sport, which we'll come to shortly, um, but also just get collect feedback from people who are starting to implement the spec. Um, we've got um, uh, a number of organisations like GLL who are starting to um, publish some open data now, and we want to encourage them to start with um, the spec um, and see how well it matches up against. Um, you know, their real world data, um, because I think the best way to actually test the spec at this stage is to really try it out with as many different data sources as possible, uh, and then use that to feed in any further, further development. Um, so uh, just kind of note where we do have a couple of open discussions. Uh, there's the disability one I just mentioned. Um, schedules and recurring events. Um, we have a proposal into uh, the schema.org group uh, about how to extend schema.org to cover recurring events. Um, that would uh, co that covers all of the requirements that we have or that we've captured so far for opportunity data. Um, the reason we did it rather than just creating our own custom property is that they were already debating that. So 
um, I just uh, submitted a proposal that would cover our needs uh, and also improve um, schema.org itself. If they decide not to go forward with that, then we can take a view of um, whether we're happy to adopt uh, whatever proposal they go with or whether we just update our specification to, to uh, take on my original proposal. Um, so there is a note in the spec to say that we're kind of waiting on some confirmation from them in that area. Um, uh, the, other, the other thing that has been highlighted where we, we don't have um, a lot of examples at the moment is around how to describe the equipment that's available at a location. So for example, that there may be uh, table tennis tables uh, available at a facility. Um, so I need to have a closer look at that um, when I start writing some of the supporting documentation to see whether there is um, existing terms in schema.org that cover that or whether we need to include some more custom properties um, in our specification. So I might uh, bounce a few suggestions off the list in that area. Um, and then the third one is the, uh, the question around activity lists, which we'll uh, come back to in a moment. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, pause briefly there. Um, and just see if anyone has any any questions on anything that I've covered so far. Sorry, Lee, just on the equipment thing. We've yep. just got a load of, um, we're doing this for active places at the moment, so we've got a whole list of equipment we're mapping across both kind of into the standard type of equipment that you get at sports centres uh, across a number of sports. Right. So I don't know whether you want that or not. Yeah, it would be useful, um, useful to take a look. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. If you can share a link to me with that, that'd be great. Okay. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to raise at this point? I don't know if it's entirely relevant, but um, one of the things that we found in the GLL data is that they have um, classes that tie to more than one activity. Um, I don't think it's a huge problem, but I noticed that what it looks like from the schema that we're at, you know, single activity per class. So don't, don't know if that's going to be relevant or useful to people. Uh, okay, that's, a, that's an interesting point. Um, so actually in the schema at the moment, you can have multiple activities for a class. Um, there's a, the, the activity property, you can, it can have a single value or you can give it a list of values. Um, uh, it may be just that the example that I've given in the specification is not that clear. Uh, maybe I can improve that. Um, but Nick from Spot England made a, a comment about that same example. It's example six. Uh, let me tell you what, I will show it. Rather than... Okay, so there's a section 551 relating events to physical activities. Um, so the first example here, example five, is just saying that this event uh, involves Tai Chi. Um, example six uh, talks about how to specify multiple activities. Um, what I included here um, is, is perhaps not the best uh, best example, but I just kind of gave a list, a, 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 basically a list of tags saying Tai Chi, martial arts and combat. Um, but that could equally have been um, uh, cycling and weights and running, you know, if there was a kind of multi, you know, multi activity event. So you could, you could specify that. Um, but I, I think Nick made a comment around, um, wanting to identify the kind of primary activity that was, it, that was being undertaken at an event. My, did I, did I interpret your comment properly, Nick? Yeah. Well, it's just, if, if you're going to, but if, if the kind of long-term thing of this is around booking and that you're trying to find an activity and then book that activity, then if you've got multiple things like martial arts or just how that example was, that's quite hard to, to do. It would cause, you know, a lot of, I suppose, a lot of issues in the, in the back ends when you're trying to connect things together. So that's why I thought, should he not have a primary activity and then draw out, I think the example you've given further on where you've actually talked about people's activity lists and you, you you've created a whole kind of tags field, but that tags field is sits alongside it to be optional. Okay. So, so Terry, how many of the kind of activities that you're publishing have a, you know, would fit into that having a kind of primary activity and then a set of others? 
Um, to, <laughs> to be to be honest, um, I don't know. We we built the facility in for them. They do use it, but I don't I don't tend to look at the content. I just look at the data structures. So um, I can't tell you how many there are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The um. Is there an, there might be an interesting question here about look, I think the way this is inferred is that the tags exist on the activities and the activities are related to the sessions themselves. <clears throat> so. Uh, am I reading that right? So we won't, we were not able to tag sessions. We're only able to tag activities and they're, they're connected to sessions. Is that right? Uh, no, that, so let me go back to the, ex get to this spec. Um, okay, so hopefully you've seen the spec. So, um, so what this, what the activity property here is saying for this event, so for this Tai Chi class, this activity is going to take place. So that you called it a session, right? But so this session is going to involve Tai Chi. Sorry, that's, I, I meant session rather than event. Yeah. Um, so um, event rather than session. So yeah, so you can you tag uh, an event uh, separately to the activity? But activity. This, this is what I'm doing. I'm tagging the event here. Sure. So, so the event so I guess I guess an example would be um, you know uh, car cardio or or something uh, as a kind of type oh of yes um, yeah so there is a, a category right there you go yeah so we can say beginner low intensity you could say cardio yeah so there's a generic tagging ability at the event level as well as at the activity yeah. level yeah so it's kind of they in in a Essentially, they're both. They can both be used in the same way. They can either be a single tag, multiple tags, or they could be a kind of more structured, as I've shown in example seven, where the activity is actually kind of, in this case, is formally defined in an activity list. Um, when here we're giving its kind of preferred label and eternal labels, and we could give kind of broader links to broader terms there. So here we could have linked out to, um, say, martial arts. Um, so both of those properties, you can, you do the, you can do the same thing, um, but the category is just a kind of broad kind of tagging property, whereas the activity property is specifically for um, uh, relating it to, um, to activities that ideally are formally defined somewhere. Lee, I was just going to say on the, um, excuse me, because I've been out of the loop for a while, so this might be already discussed about before. When you're talking about the equipment at the facility, has anything been considered about the equipment that the individual should bring with them to the facility? Uh, no, no, there was, a, there was a broad, so there was a broad set of, um, uh, I guess qualifiers, prerequisites that we kind of chatted about on the last call um, and kind of, you know, things like, you know, equipment that you needed to bring or whether you need to be a member or other kinds of um, prerequisites um, were kind of on that list. Um, but there wasn't a kind of strong feeling that we should do, should include that in the first version of the spec. I mean, I'm happy to revise that if there's a, um, if there's a need for it. Um, I was just thinking from, from the consumer's perspective, which I guess that's the end goal, um, from the consumer's perspective, it's going to be very important for them to know what the requirements are on them in order to attend whatever session it is. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the, so I think we have to think about what's, what's the kind of discovery use cases. So, I mean, one way to, to handle this is that in the event description, if somebody, you know, somebody might say you need to bring equipment x with you um that that might be enough um i think the, the rationale for including it in a more structured format would be to um you know to, i guess to provide that in a more principled way or you know maybe let people find events that did or didn't require them to use certain equipment but i'm not sure we have kind of strong requirements there so i kind of like to go back to I guess back to the group really I can, we can share this with the mail list and say what you know what kind of use cases do people have around um that kind of prerequisite yeah I mean, it, just I maybe... like it's a balance between not having it on the list because you could put it in the additional information and 
people that are providing this data knowing that it's important for it to be in the additional information because people might not need to be able to search by it but if it's not in the criteria then people might not include it and it's important that it is known for the consumer because that's going to be a big barrier for a lot of people attending or not attending just knowing what to expect yeah okay yeah and maybe maybe it's some type of guidance notes around what should be included in the additional information i don't know yeah i, I sorry Liz, nikki i agree with jade there i thought that's what we we kind of got to that we discussed that last week and we said well maybe or it might not be the, the structured fields but there was a need for where everyone creates those notes that particularly for those smaller providers who wouldn't necessarily have a structured fields around price or these other things that they should almost have include all that in that extra information yeah okay so i think it's and so is that question of what do we need a document or something that that would help that sits alongside here as a kind of good practice yes um so it might we do a bit of both I and mean, it might be useful to for me to put a a note or a section um in this spec to say uh, the kind of information that we would expect to see in a description field um and in the uh tutorial documentation that i'm producing um i can include a section on that as well so we've got it in both places yeah um, so there's some other things that may also be in there like um what they what they should wear what footwear they should wear i don't know if that's been covered already but that sort of thing the consumer needs to know too yeah okay Ben, isn't there a field like this in open sessions already? Yes, yeah, so in open sessions, um, we find that um, clubs who have their sessions don't always know um, exactly what people would need to know. So we give them prompts in terms of here's a description, here's what you might put in the description. And then we have a separate field for, um, you know, is there any equipment you need to bring, what do you need to wear? Because um, we found, um, particularly when people are trying something new, um, sort of not having that information is just enough to um, to be a, a blocker. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I, I quite like that idea of actually having a separate field for it because it gives us another hook for us to document. Um, so it provides a little bit more structure around it without getting into you know how do we describe lists of equipment. Um, so perhaps I can include that in, a, in an update to the spec. Okay, that's, that's very useful, thank you. Um, uh, any other comments or shall I, shall I move on? I was just um, reflecting a bit on, um, on actually um, information on how you attend a session. Um, so it's, it's obviously quite straightforward when there's um, bookability um, but then it gets a bit more complicated when you look at sessions that smaller clubs run and um, often they don't have a booking um, facility um, and they need it, many many are happy just for people to turn up um, then there's the issue of do you turn up with cash or card and, and then some of them actually need you to email them and, and sort of register by email. So there's a little bit of complexity around um, the actually attend a session. And uh, I wondered whether um, the spec could have any details on how you actually go to something, how you actually um, commit to going to something. Yeah, okay, that's easy. In our system, we have um, a, a capture field for accepted methods of payment. Um, it sort of comes up how you could pay. Can you pay in cash when you arrive? Can you pay by card? Is it a call? It's not a problem. Okay. So this, this feels like it's kind of related to some other questions around kind of availability and booking more broadly. Um, which we, we haven't really kind of dug into very much because we've kind of purposely focused some of the initial work on just trying to get this kind of basic data model together. Um, so 
Um, what I'm wondering is whether um, we should at least kick off having some of those discussions in um, one of the, the next couple of community group hangouts, um, whether we can just start to just kind of do some requirements capture in that area. Um, even if it doesn't necessarily go into the formal specification yet, that we can at least start to, to get, get some of the requirements down, um, get people to share their experience with capturing and, and um, documenting that kind of information. Um, does that sound like a reasonable step forward? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, great. Okay, I will, I will schedule one of our calls around that as a theme then. Great. Okay, um, I'm going to jump back to my slides. Okay, so um, in terms of uh, next steps, um, the, uh, as you can see on the slide, um, we're going to be putting out a, a kind of call for, um, for implementations, so for people to start kind of testing the specification in earnest. So um, uh, GLL are going to be, I think, paving the way there. So thank you, Terry. Um, and uh, we'll be asking some of the others that have um, started to publish data under Open Active to kind of look at the, the specification as well. Um, to help support people uh, in moving forward and help kind of uh, signpost them towards using the specification, um, we're going to be doing some um, additional work. So I'm currently working on um, what I'm calling a primer document, which is going to be um, a series of how-to questions and answers um, that relate to specific bits of the specification. So it will be, you know, how do I describe uh, uh, when an event will be taking place? How, how do I describe where it's going to be taking place? How do I categorize events? This kind of thing. So that the developer is coming in and needs to know um, how to use parts of the specification can just look for look in that primer for questions and uh, answers with examples that um, that support that. Um, it's something that um, we've produced with other specifications and seems to be a, a kind of good way to um, to signpost people into some of the detail. Um, we're also going to be doing a, a fairly minor change to the existing um, paging specification um, that currently just says uh, that um, people can uh, publish whatever data uh, they have available. Um, and uh, we're just going to uh, just update that to just um, recommend that people look at using the, the modeling opportunity data specification to organize their data um, and, and point out to the primer um, and supporting documentation that, that says how they could um, include any custom elements as well. Um, but so I had a question um, uh, for the group um, about how we can kind of best support uh, this kind of uh, sort of implementation and testing phase. Um, so we'll have the primer. Um, we're also planning to do some work at the ODI around creating some data validation tools so that you can check that your data follows the specification. You know, we'll check it against the conformance criteria. But I'm just wondering whether there's other ways that we can offer support. Um, to help kind of um, encourage people to to get more involved and start using the specification. Um, the things that we've done in the past are uh, create more tutorials, um, which might be focused on particular domains or particular systems. Um, we could do a more detailed walkthrough on one of the calls to maybe look at um, the primer and the kind of step through um, how to at least kind of publish some basic opportunity data. Um, that people might find that useful. There may be other ideas. So I just kind of really wanted to um, uh, throw that out to everyone just to see if you, anyone had any suggestions. I got um, one. Yep. Um, which is because I, I, I yesterday started to look at this stuff. And one of the first things I did was went to, um, Nick had showed me a GitHub page where people were posting their, um, their feeds that they were working on. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I went to look for was, is there something with everything in it, an example with everything in it, that I can just chop out the bits that we don't use? And although that's probably on that page somewhere, uh, it, I had to kind of click through a bunch of stuff to try and find, find the right one. So it'd be useful to have an example somewhere on the, the spec or reference in the spec to say, here's, here's, here's a 
kitchen sink version, which you can then chop out. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Okay, I can do that. Um, we've got a, we've got a GitHub repo. It might be the same repo, but we have a repo with a few examples in there, um, which you can customize. But yeah, uh, creating a a kitchen sink one is, is is a good idea. So I can add that to my list. Um, is there anything else that people would find useful? Um, I'm coming at this from a non-developer techie. Um, that's, that's me. Um, when I initially started talking to um, an organisation about doing it, and this is really basic, they just wanted to know if a developer was going to do this, um, how long is it going to take and how much did it cost them? Um, which is just real basic level, but that that's the if you just go talk to whoever in, in whatever organization, that's going to be their first point of interest. Yes, okay, Nick, you've you've kind of been I think handled that question a few times. Do you want to? I was going to say, yeah, there is a there's actually a, a step by step on the uh open active website on the open my data section at the top or open your data. Um, so I think in step one, where it says implement, it's got two to three days of developer time um, as the kind of estimate there, um, which has been kind of repeatedly independently validated by everybody that we've asked, except for a few developers who quoted three weeks and then we showed them that and they said, oh, actually, maybe I've misread the spec. Um, so it's quite good to keep people <laughs> talking about the same thing. Um, if they're thinking it's three weeks, then maybe they're going to do something else, which we need to uh, so yeah, that's that's probably quite a good number to use. Um, it's not part of the spec per se, but it is part of the kind of step by step get started. Yeah. So uh, Jade, as your your perspective as a kind of non technical person would be, or non developer I should say, um, uh, is useful because it would be useful to know what is there some higher level documentation that would be useful for you to be able to say to people, this is why this is why we've created the standard or you know this is why you should be interested in in supporting it um maybe i to be completely honest with that our, our new system went live like a couple of weeks ago so i've been drowning in that and sort of been a bit out of the loop and I start early next week um from our perspective we we think that a lot of organisations, unless we go to them and we explain it to them and give them a very good reason for wanting to do it, we're going to have to go make the sale to them rather than sending them documents. I think that's that's going to be the way forward. Um, and our approach is with a lot of the commercial organisations that we're working with, they don't, they won't just want to open up their data; they'll want to know what that leads to. And so that's why we're taking the approach of going to them and open up your data. And um, we're, we're look, I'm going to be talking about aggregating it for them so I can show them how opening up their data will result in the end in more sales for them. And I said that sounds a bit harsh, but um, for a lot of commercial organisations, that's what they, they want to know the end, the end game. Yeah. So, Jade, Jade, it might be worth, I know we've got a, a catch up um, next week, maybe. Um, it yeah. might be worth picking that up. Uh, so, I think that's probably what we've been calling engagement rather than standards work. Um, and yeah. certainly, we can, we can furnish you with a whole bunch of collateral around the sales side of this, um, which includes that, some of that material, slides, uh, a, a kind of a brief summary of benefits, things like that, um, which uh, absolutely... 100 percent are required in every case uh we haven't ha had one case yet where someone just picked up a spec and gone i'll do this because it looks like fun oh yeah. I, I lie one developer did that and and came into the meeting having already implemented the spec before we started the meeting which was amazing uh but uh yeah that's i, I guess an exception okay okay um right. i'm gonna move us on because a couple of things to talk about so um but if any if you have any further suggestions um, as you start uh, looking through the specification, then please, please let me know, because I think, you know, we're at that kind of key point where getting more people to use it um, is really, really critical. So anything we can do to re reduce the friction there is good. Um, so I'm going to jump back to my slides. Okay, uh, so this is the uh, agenda item that uh, Ben uh, asked if I could add. So this is around um, uh, categorizing the disability support available at events. 
Um, so I gather this is something that uh, Open Sessions does already. I've created, included a, a kind of uh, a very poor quality screenshot from the from the interface there. But um, Ben, perhaps you could uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, those fields in Open Sessions. Um, it feels like something that we need to be including in the standard at some point. You muted, Ben. Hello. Um, okay, so one of the requirements from Get Active um, London and other Get Active sites was that um, you could filter uh, by disability. Um, and these are where those categories actually come from. They come from Get Active. Um, and they, they cover the five of uh, the five categories kind of cover at quite a high level um, yeah, a, a set of disabilities and then um, and, and then there's this option if, if uh, clubs aren't really sure um, you can get in touch with them um, so that's sort of another option um, but really we want this to be more um, this is kind of a work in progress. It's a very, um, it's very, very broad. And um, the physical impairment, for instance, um, isn't necessarily very helpful. Um, so we see this kind of being potentially a hierarchical list. Um, and the, the best example of this, you could find it on um, parasports.org.uk. Um, where you could search for sports, um, you know, f at high level it's physical impairment, but then you could say spinal cord injury, and then you can be more specific than that and say um, quadriplegic or paraplegic, and then that will kind of take you into um, a, a search which is very specific to your needs. Um, so yeah, we, we see it as sort of evolving, but at the moment we've got these sort of five categories which, which cover um, the, the five main groups. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, what, what have others, what other people used in this kind of area? Um, is it similar uh, broad categories or kind of hierarchical schemes like Ben used? Jane, Terry, do you, do you know what you do in your systems? I'm literally just looking at one of my clients. Uh, I, we work with London Sport. Uh, I'm just looking at the database right now. So give me a minute or two and I'll report back. Excellent. Okay. Um, and uh, on, from the uh, side of um, e EFDS, the English Federation of Disability Sports, we've had a few conversations with before. Um, they, they certainly have a view on, on this kind of list and um, contributing to that. And I also believe prompting Nick a little bit that Alison mentioned that there was a there's a someone in Sport England or some group in Sport England that also does has a focus on this as well as um, EFDS so there's potential sources of knowledge there um, and, and it all kind of boils down to either the, the ones that are in open sessions or there's a kind of more granular list that I think they're using in Gloucestershire which is eight or nine including upper or lower body impairments as kind of a division um but uh, certainly it's something that when we've spoken to and also um what are they called motivate east in east london um that, that all of these people are keen to standardize this and they've all got views on how granular to make it or less granular to make it so i think there's definitely a specialist discussion that potentially can be had by bringing some of these people in um to, to ask them about about that yeah. Yeah, but I think from our point of view, sport England, it is it is a big area, and if you you don't want to get it wrong, so you know it's almost as big as when you start looking at it, when you break it down, as big as when you start getting into volunteering and into coaching kind of issues around that around disability sport. So if we're going to embark on that, I think we need to do a bit of impact about you know potentially how far you want to go down this or how long this might take because it is it could be quite a bit of work. I mean, it is on the scale of doing that, like the volunteering and, and coaching kind of stuff. So it, I know we want to create simple things to start off with, but there's a danger that we'll create it too simply and then we'll get some, we'll get some kind of blowback on it. So I think we need to kind of maybe have a few discussions offline and then come back with a potential way forward. 
One one of the the other things, sorry, go on, Terry. No, go on. Just just, uh, reporting back, look at the list I've got uh, got here. It it pretty much is, it doesn't go into a huge bunch bunch of detail. It's kind of disability, mental health, physical health, and it doesn't go go further. So it's not, not as helpful as I thought it might be, sorry. No problem. Jane, do we want to say something? Uh, yeah, I, I shared a screenshot of what we have. We've got the quite high level view, which is um, we consulted with ESDS and Interactive on the name of that's what they agreed as the, the, the top levels. And we've taken the perspective of allowing people to search by the top level, but then when you go into the actual event or activity, there's then additional information that can be free type. Um, because we didn't want to go into the 25 different potential categories because it was too detailed at that at, at this stage and um, but we wanted the ability to be able to share that information so that we took that high level with free text boxes basically sorry jay are you saying that you you consulted um um efds and active the other guys um Interactive, yeah. Interactive, yeah, the London Sport uh, folks. Um, yeah. uh, is that like, so? You do, you've already kind of done that consultation piece, and the result of that was use this kind of small list. Um, well, we uh, we we consulted them on what should be on the small list, rather than whether they thought there should be a small. Well, we had I had the conversation with Interactive whether whether they thought we should have a massive list or a small list, and they said that they, they thought the best approach to take would be to have the small list with additional information that could be free type. Really interesting. It's just, and just in terms of, because I know that one of the public sector requirements, which I suppose is um, what I was going to say before, is, is often to, to include this somewhere. Um, so, some, so people like CSPs, um, public health, usually need to have this box ticked as in, as in they've, they've accounted for uh, disability impairment groups. Um, so if there's a simple solution like that that we can use, um, if, if the alternative is to go into you know massive amount of work, maybe there's a, a start of a 10 there if there's already been some work done. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, um, in the end, most, I had most of the cons- um, consultation with Interactive and it was them that confirmed um, use the use of that small list with the additional information so if someone puts a impairment they could then put underneath what what that was specifically i tell you what would be really great and this i'll just throw this out there would be to have a, a session like this with interactive uh efds sporting and disability rep etc on the call and openly discussing this because i think that whatever's decided i imagine as nick says someone at some point is going to challenge that decision if we go big list small list you know whatever we do um and if it's an open spec it might be worth us making sure that we have that discussion uh, in the open potentially my suggestion would be um if we were to do that to put together what we think it should be and then gather their feedback on that rather than have an open what should we have it might just get us to the end point really fast yeah, I think I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of having things for people to comment on because um, it uh, draws it draws kind of attention. Um, okay, I think I think we should do that then. So I think um, so. JD said you shared a screenshot, but I, I, I'm not sure I can see it. I don't know whether you. Oh, I put it on the send it on the chat thing. I think. Zoom group chat. Yeah, it's just the Are you able to uh, to share your screen with it? If there's a button to do that, that might be quicker. Or get gets into the video then too. Told you I wasn't techie. <laughs> well, what, what I was going to suggest is perhaps if you're happy, just kind of sharing either the screenshot. I can send the link to where it all is. And yeah. Okay. Then we can we can just do the kind of groundwork of just collecting together what in, <coughs> excuse me what information people are collecting at the moment, yeah. and then kick that around on the list to have a straw man that we could then 
reach out to some of these organ, uh, organizations to get their specific feedback on um, and approach it that way. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll take an action to, uh, to move that forward. Okay. Um, so uh, unless there's anything else that somebody wants to say there, I'm going to move us on because I want to try and keep us to time. Um, go back to my slides. So, um, so the, the kind of final, the kind of yeah, the final agenda item really um, was uh, just to try and get some clarity around the next steps with regards to activity lists. Um, so, um, where we are currently is um, we have defined a data model, a standard for uh, sharing of activity lists. So um, there are some examples in the specification now about how to, to share lists in a structured format. Um, a few uh, organizations, so Sport England, uh, Sport Suite, Open Sessions and IMIN have shared example data that shows what their um, activity lists look like. And I posted to the mailing list, uh, I think a week or so ago, um, to say that I converted some of those into a standard format just really to kind of validate that this specification supported the types of lists that people had in their systems. So it was a kind of, those were useful inputs to the, the standardization process and it's been a useful way to validate the model. Um, so we've kind of, we can put a tick in the box in, in having a, a kind of data format. Um, the next steps I think are around actually encouraging people to start sharing those lists as open data. So not just with this group, but publishing them on their websites um, and using the data, the standard to, to do that. Um, and then from that basis, we can then start to think about how we uh, go about the process of creating a more standardized list of activities. So what, what requirements people have in that space um, and talking about the kind of process for doing that um, and the people who need to be involved. Um, the, there are a few different approaches of kind of trying to take a more kind of top down view of, of kind of recommending a particular list and, and asking people to adopt it. Um, there are also approaches that are a bit more bottom up, which just involves asking people to share their lists and then you know, seeing which ones get adopted um, and trying to encourage some convergence around that. Um, so um, to try and lay those options out a bit more clearly, um, what I'm going to be doing is just creating a uh, a short roadmap probably just be a kind of one two page document that just says how uh, I think we can move forward on creating that standardized list of activities and then I want to devote our next call on the 12th of April to go into that topic specifically um, so we can kind of kick around um, what that what that actually involves um, so really that's just a kind of a kind of update on on where we're at um, uh, is everyone kind of happy with 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 that process or has any questions about um, you know, what work is happening around activity lists at the moment? Well, one thing that um, might be just to think about to feed into that next call is that um, as you said that some of the I know that activity lists can be quite fluid in some systems um, by which I mean user generated um, so it is, it might be the case that for systems, for, for people to start publishing their activity lists, uh, what that might mean is that they either have to take a snapshot in time of a list that they've got from their system, um, and publish that, um, or, um, yeah, or, or move towards kind of some kind of system where they, they control the list a bit more carefully themselves and then, and then maintain that. Yeah, that, 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 that's a good point. So my, my assumption has been that, that, that those people that uh, might publish their activity list as open data as a separate um, download would be those that already have a curation process in place where they're managing a list internally. I know that Sport England do that, Sport Suite do that, uh, organizations like Four Global are doing that. So those are kind of documents that have value and that could, could be, uh, that value could be shared with the community if they're published openly. 
but I think things that are a bit more kind of user generated, a bit more free form, there's kind of a less of a value in, in sharing those. It might be more valuable for those uh, organizations to be able to use lists that are shared with the community. But I think that's just something that we need to kind of spell that out in a, in a process. And that's what I kind of want to do in that, um, in that documentation that I'll share with the, with the group next week. Um, but I just wanted to recap that because we've had a few conversations now around the process around activity lists. Um, and we're kind of at, at the point, I think, of having the kind of groundwork in place that it, we can now kind of um, get, get into the details a bit more. Um, um, is, is everyone happy with that? Has anyone got any questions about um, or questions or concerns about that process? One thing, again, I don't know if it will be relevant, but um, we've, we've had a lot of uh, um, managing of the activity list, let's put it that way, uh, in the GLL system. And I think the, the thing is just clarity for whoever is, is defining their list, um, because we've had a, we had a thing whereby sessions have names and then the activities within sessions have names. And that, that list of activities grew exponentially and we had to come back and kind of boil it down and the reason it grew exponentially is because people call the same activity slightly different things and it's, so it's just it's just giving the the person supplying the list the indication to say some things are some activities are indisputable like um, cycling yeah so even though you internally in your organization you might call it fast cycling or spin cycling whatever the thing is the activity is cycling so and trying to trying to divorce the internal nomenclature from the public, uh, public's the wrong word, but the kind of, uh, uh, the definition of it. I'm not finding the right words here, but I'm hoping you know what I mean. Yes, I do, yes, yeah, yeah. And, and we, have, we have provision for kind of handling that type of uh, issue in the specification at the moment, because you can collect these alternate labels um, for activities and still have a kind of preferred kind of canonical one that you use in the system. Um, I think a lot of the, the questions around activity lists are as much about the design of user interfaces for inputting events and some of the systemic benefits of converging on standardized lists to help with data integration as it is about kind of standardization work, um, you know, in terms of data formats, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, right, we are nearly um, out of time. Um, it, is there anything else anyone wants to bring to the group today? Um, anything that is any kind of burning questions or things that are kind of front of mind at the moment? No? Okay, um, shout if not, otherwise I've got my last slide. So I just wanted to kind of recap about um, the best way to kind of uh, contribute for the next steps. So obviously, you know, we've got the mailing list. Um, if you've got any additional comments to the, the specification, um, then uh, please, please share. Um, uh, you know, as, as I said earlier, it's quite, it's quite a lengthy document now. Um, if you, don't, if you not, don't have time to kind of work through it in detail, even just piecemeal comments on individual sections is fine. Um, so just kind of share thoughts as you, as you have them. Um, uh, as I said earlier in the call, I'm particularly keen to get experience of people actually trying the specification against real world data to see how well it fits. So kind of detailed technical feedback is appreciated as well. Um, as well as the mailing list, then um, uh, we also have GitHub for, for as, as an issue tracker. I've been using that to kind of collate uh, my kind of actions and work as I've been um, working on the drafts over the last few months. Um, so please feel free to uh, add, add issues. Um, ben, if you're happy, it'd be, it'd be good if you could just file an issue around the disability um, question, disability support question, um, and then we can start um, uh, collecting some of the requirements in that space. Um, uh, thank you. Um, and um, also just kind of a call to, to share the specification out with, um, with your colleagues and with your uh, individual networks. Um, we've got a blog post that will be going out, um, I think, in the next day or so. Um, that will just be doing a kind of general update on the standards work for people who aren't have, have been as closely involved um, with this group. Um, and given that, 
giving them some specific calls to action to to look at the specification and start um, start exploring what it means for them opening up their data. Um, so that anything you can do to help promote that would be uh, very useful. So um, Lee, just on that point, is there any parts of it you want to you know get? people to particularly comment on or bits of it so if we're sharing it with other organizations are there any bits you think yeah we definitely want is this bit really right or from you know the tricky bits as we've discussed it over the last few weeks um i think the the bit that i'm although we, we made some discussion some decisions about kind of categorizations and participation and prerequisites and stuff last week i think that's the bit where i'm still a little bit uneasy so really just that uh, I guess the event description, because that's the core of the data model. So any any kind of properties or information that might need to go on on events. So getting people to kind of focus on that specifically, I think would be good. Okay. So I think that wraps us up for another call. So, um, our next one is in, it's in two weeks today. Um, so we're going to focus that on um, discussion around standardizing activity lists. Um, and then in a month's time, we will have a session that's going to focus on um, just collecting some initial requirements around, um, uh, uh, well, I guess, around booking, availability, and getting involved with events. Uh, and then um, perhaps the in six weeks time we'll have one around disability but we can schedule that depending on priorities but just give you a sense of, of what the trajectory will be for the next few calls so uh, I think that's it for today um, thank you uh, all again for taking some time out um, and Lee can I just uh, um, apologies for this week uh, just thought I'd include those at the end um, so Andy from Devon, uh, Brent from Fettel, uh, uh, Christopher from Zerco, uh, that's Chris, uh, Jamie from My Local Pitch, Kim from Sports Suite, Mike from um, Pawsome, and uh, Raymond from Clarity Live all send their apologies. So hopefully next week we'll have everybody <laughs> back, in, back in the room. I, I guess this is where we also say hello to people watching at home. So. Um. If you have comments that occurred to you whilst watching the video, then please send them to the list. Right, I'll wind up the call there. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, very, very, very useful, productive as always. So. Thanks, Lee. Right. Thanks, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank